Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. This is Noodles. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. What we're going to do today is linear algebra one. Chapter two is matrices. Section 2.5 is inverse matrices and the matrix formula this time. Specifically, what we're going to do this lecture is we're going to do the formula for inverse matrices via cofactors and determinants. This guy. And then what we're going to do is use that finally. Now that we have more than one systematic method of finding inverses, we're going to use it to solve this equation, which is an n by n linear system, which is going to have a unique solution, if and only if the determinant is non-zero, so we can invert. Let's get to it. Okay, we need one last definition before we state our main result, which is the cofactor matrix transposed is usually how I present it to first-year students because they don't want to learn adjunct or the difference between adjoint. Adjoint is sometimes used in other contexts in linear algebra, so Solomonovich doesn't like the fact that we call it adjoint. It should be called adjunct. I somewhat disagree with both of those scenarios because a first-year student doesn't want to hear either of those words. They just want to do matrix cofactor transposed. It's going to be... you build the matrix of cofactors and then you transpose it, that's what the adjunct is called. If I've given an n by n matrix, the ith jth cofactor is associated to the ith jth entry. We already have those. Go watch the previous video how to build cofactors. And then what we're going to do is the matrix of cofactors, we're going to build an entire n by n matrix out of those cofactors. So every cofactor we make for aij, we're going to get a cij and we're going to make the entire n by n matrix of cofactors. Then the adjunct or matrix of cofactors transposed is this guy, and we're gonna denote it ADJ. So all that is is notice that this is the first row of the cofactors. It now became the first column in the cofactor transposed, just what transpose does, it makes rows columns. It turns out that if you multiply the original matrix A by this thing, then scalar multiply it by one over the determinant, you get identity, which means that this thing times one over the determinant is the inverse matrix of the n by n matrix if it exists. Let's state that as a theorem. Theorem, an n by n matrix A is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. And in such a case, what we're going to do is we have explicitly a formula. Now, instead of having to use row reduction, we have this explicit formula, which is one over the determinant, a joint matrix. Or if you don't want to remember a joint, that just means matrix of cofactors transposed. So what we're going to do is the inverse matrix now is just one over determinant, which is a number, times the matrix of cofactors transposed. This is how we're going to compute inverses. All right, for our first example, what we're going to do is in section 2.3, what we did was we gave using row reduction, we showed that an explicit formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix is this guy. We can derive this using our formula now. This is determinant and these guys are going to turn out being the cofactors transposed. Let's do that. First of all, what I have is the determinant of A is A, B, C, D, which is A, D minus B, C. That's this guy, and it's one over. That looks like a formula already. Now what we want to do is practice getting cofactors of two by two in general. In larger matrices is when you're really going to want to find all these cofactors because 2 by 2 matrix isn't that hard to row reduce either. But for large ones, this is not so fun. Now what do I want? I want C11, C12. These are what? Negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, M11. This, which is equal to M11. This is negative 1 to the 1 plus 2, which is M12, which is negative M12. And what are these? These are obtained by blocking off row one and column one. So this is D. And this one is M12 is obtained by blocking off row one and column two. So I'm going to get negative C. And then I also need C21 and C22. This is negative one to the two plus one M21, which is negative M21. And this is negative one to the two plus two m22, which is m22. Negative m21 is subdeterminant obtained by blocking off row 2 and column 1. So I'm going to get negative b. And then m22 is obtained by blocking off row 2 and column 2. So I'm going to get a. Then the matrix of cofactors specifically is going to be c is going to be equal to c11, c12, c21, c22, which is equal to what? We have D, and then we have negative C, and then we have negative B, and then we have A. And usually it's someone 
at this point says, I thought you said it was B and the, yeah, we're going to transpose it and then it will be. So then what does this say? The cofactor, the adjoint of A is this matrix of cofactors transposed, which is going to be D, negative B, negative C, A. And therefore we can see that the inverse of A is equal to one over A, D minus B, C, D, negative B, negative C, A. This is one over determinant cofactor matrix transposed. So this already was the formula which we derived independently a different way, but it still gave us another way of viewing this. And this is how we extend. Now that when we have large matrices, this is going to become much more useful because doing row reduction is going to be much harder than just finding all of the cofactors and multiplying by one over determinant. Let's try that. For example, nobody likes A, B, C, D, so there's the first four prime numbers. For two by twos, first you compute the determinant. If that's zero, you can stop. That one's not gonna work out very well. So first, what do I do with any matrix that I'm arbitrarily given? I check the determinant. The determinant of A is A, D minus B, C, which is two times seven minus three times five, which is negative one, which is not zero. A's inverse exists. B, we're gonna compute the determinant of B. The determinant of B is AD minus BC, which is one times six minus three times two, which is six minus six, which is zero. B inverse does not exist. Here, A minus one exists, and we have a formula. What you can do with this is A inverse is going to be one over the determinant, negative one, that's just a number. I know it doesn't look like it in our horrible formula. This is now going to be what? You take the main diagonal ones and flip them, and you put negatives on the off diagonals. So we're going to flip the 7 and the 2, and then we're going to put negatives on to these ones. This is scalar multiplication, so I'm going to put it back in. This is going to be negative 7, 3, 5, negative 2. Do you believe me? You have a check, just like we did in the previous videos. Once you find it and you do all that work, A times A inverse is 2, 3, 5, 7 times negative seven three five negative two which is going to be a two by two matrix and in the first one i get negative 14 plus 15 is one six minus six is zero negative 35 plus 35 is zero and 15 minus 14 is one. Oh, i got the identity matrix once you do the work you have a check multiplied by the original matrix and it should give you identity every time this is the definition of inverse matrix now you have two methods of finding it when you do that, check to make sure you got the right thing. Let's do a three by three. You can try for yourself if you want to row reduce this, put the block three by three identity matrix behind this and row reduce this to reduce row echelon form. The determinant is negative 41, so you're not gonna have a very good time with that. What we're gonna now do is we're gonna be able to find the inverse and all of these horrible fractions with never ever computing fractional computations. The fractions come at the end when I multiply by one over the determinant, which is negative 41. That's where the fractions come in. If I have a matrix that has all non fractional entries or whole numbers. Cofactors will never build fractions by their computation. All you do is take them and multiply and add these things, entries together to create cofactors. So you'll never create fractions there. The fractions come from row reduction or from one over the determinant at the end. So this method is not gonna introduce fractions until the end. What do I need? Also, I want steps. First of all, what's this test? The Pavlovian test is the determinant should be non-zero, then I proceed. How do I compute determinants? You can cofactor expand along any row or any column. What does that mean? I need, in this case, three entries and three cofactors. I see a zero here, so if I cofactor expand along column one, I need two cofactors. So that's the column I'm going to expand along. I know that in my mind, first of all, I need the determinant of A, and that is A11C11 plus A21C21 plus A31C31, and this one I don't care because A31 is zero. That one's going to go away. That's how I'm going to compute. I'm going to compute them all anyways because I need explicitly the inverse. So we have to, this time, you can't just do that. If they ask just for the determinant, I don't care, but I need C31. Why do I need C31 now? Because he has to go into the matrix of cofactors, and then I need to transpose it to find the inverse. So I still need to compute it anyways. Therefore, now that I know that this is the way that I'm going to compute the determinant, if that's zero, I don't have to compute any of the other cofactors. Don't compute all nine or 16 or 25 or 36 cofactors as we go and get bigger and bigger. Therefore, C11 is equal to negative one to the one plus one M11, which is M11. 
c21 is negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 m21, which is negative m21, and c31 is negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 m31, which is m31. What are these? This is a 2 by 2 determinant. This is negative times a 2 by 2 determinant. This is a 2 by 2 determinant. Then I go back to my matrix and I say, how do I get this? c11 is obtained by blocking off row 1 and column 1. So then what are we going to get? This matrix 4115, which is 20 minus 1, which is 19. C21 is negative M21. How do I get M21? This is going to be negative times the matrix blocking off row 2. Sorry now. Careful. This is now going to be row 2 I block off and column 1. So this one, 3415, which is going to be what? 15 minus 4 with a negative on the outside there which is negative 11. And then this one, M31, how do I obtain this? This is a negative one. This is blocking off row three, it says, and column one. So this one, three, four, four, one, which is what? We're going to get three minus 16, which is negative 13. That's the one I didn't care about except putting it into the matrix cofactors transposed. Now, what do I do with those three numbers? Those three numbers and these three numbers, I use cofactor expansion along column one. This is now equal to, what do I get? A11 was negative one times 19, C11, plus A21 is two, plus, or times C21, negative 11, plus, zero so i don't really care it's not going to add into the determinant but i need to put a cofactor transpose that's going to give me what that's going to give me negative 19 minus 22 which is negative 41 which is not zero so a minus one exists that's the check you do compute three cofactors or pick a row or column that has as many zeros as possible compute the cofactors you need to compute a determinant if that's not zero keep going if it's zero you can say it doesn't exist we have to keep going Let's compute the other six cofactors now. All right, I'm going to put on the side what we got from the first steps. We now know that the determinant is negative 41, which is non-zero, so I have to compute the rest of the cofactors, and I'm listing because I had to erase what the first three cofactors were because I need them for a matrix. These entries are going to be that matrix of cofactors, and I'm going to transpose, multiply it by 1 over negative 41, and that is the inverse of this guy. Let's compute all these other cofactors. How do I do that? By definition, C12 is negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 M12, which is negative M12, which is a negative 2 by 2 determinant. I'll do that in a second. C22 is negative 1 to the 2 plus 2 M22, which is M22, which is a 2 by 2 determinant, which I'll compute in a second. And then C32 is negative 1 to the 3 plus 2 M32, which is negative M32, which is negative a 2 by 2 determinant which we will now compute. I set that up and that's the memorization of the definition of what a horrible cofactor is. Now I unwind that. Now I have to worry about the two by two determinants obtained by blogging off stuff. So what are we going to get? We're doing, it looks like the second column cofactor expansion. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to block off row one and column two. We're going to get two one zero five. And that is going to be negative times 10 minus 0, which is 10, so negative 10. For this one, C22, we're blocking off the Greek cross, row 2 and column 2. So we're going to get negative 1, 4, 0, 5, which is going to be negative 5 minus 0. And then C32 is going to be row 3 and column 2 again, so we're going to get negative 1, 4, 2, 1. And that's going to give us, careful, negative times negative 1 minus 8, which is negative 9. So that should give us 9. Therefore, I've computed those guys. Let's put those in there. Negative 10, negative 5, negative 9. And then let's compute the last three. Negative 10, negative 5, 9. And then what do we need? The last ones. C13, C23, and C33 is what we need. Equals, equals, equals. And then I regurgitate the mantra of the definition that I know. This is negative 1 to the 1 plus 3, M13, which is equal to M13, which is a 2 by 2 determinant, which I'll compute in a second. This one is negative 1 to the 2 plus 3, M23, which is negative M23, which is negative times a 2 by 2 determinant. And this is negative 1 to the 3 plus 3, M33, which is 
M33, which is a two by two determinant. Now I compute this one is going to be row one, and this time I know it's going to be column three every time, so I can do that for myself. So it's going to be row one and column three, two, four, zero, one, which is going to give me two. This one is going to be what? We're going to block off the middle row and the last column, so we're going to get negative one, three, zero, one. So we're going to get negative negative one, which is one here. What we're going to get at is we're going to block off this and this is M three, three, which is negative one, three, two, four, which is negative four minus six, which is negative 10. Let's put those in there. And what do we do with those? We're going to build the matrix of cofactors. This tells us that the matrix of, uh, let's just do the matrix of cofactors first. The matrix of cofactors is C one, one, C one, two, C one, three, C two, one, C two, two, C two, three, C three one C three two C three three again. So then there's the mumbo jumbo of what we give it to you as. What does that mean? We just computed all these. Now that's going to be what nineteen, then negative eleven, then negative thirteen, and for this column it's going to be negative ten, negative five, nine, and then this column is going to be two one negative ten. This is the matrix of cofactors. I just computed all nine. Notice that it tells you how many you're going to have to compute three times three cofactors, which is nine cofactors. Now that we've co computed all of those and we have the determinant, what we have to do is the cofactor matrix transposed, which is the adjunct of A, is going to be this row becomes the first column. So 19, negative 10, 2, then negative 11, negative 5, 1, then negative 13, 9, negative 10. This is the matrix of cofactors transposed, and this tells us that the inverse matrix A is 1 over the determinant of A, which is a number, times the adjoint or adjunct, which is 1 over negative 41 times this matrix 19, negative 11, negative 13, negative 10, negative 5, 9, 2, 1, negative 10. And what that technically means is we have now, this is scalar multiplication. This is negative 19 over 41. This is 11 over 41. This is 13 over 41. This is 10 over 41. This is 5 over 41. This is negative 9 over 41. This is negative 2 over 41. This is negative 1 over 41. And this is 10 over 41. If you do it the other way, and when you put the block identity matrix behind this, you're going to have to row reduce all the way to reducible echelon form, and that's what you're going to get. And there's going to be fractions in your computations, and the denominator is going to be 41, which is prime. It's a twin prime pair, in fact. And so this is going to be no fun. This is the advantage of this algebraic formula. At first, yes, you have to learn what an adjoint is and the cofactor transpose and this cofactor expansion and what are you doing and all of these terminology. But the extreme advantage to this now is with this algebraic formula, if I'm given a matrix which has no fractions, the fractions will come at the computation of the inverse at the end when I multiply scalar multiple to get this. I'm not going to check, but you can if you multiply this also. I would leave them negative 41 on the outside. Multiply this matrix by A and then scale multiply it to 41, and you'll see that you're going to get the identity matrix when we compute this. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time.